All right, we're going to talk about finding arc measures today. And first, we need to know some vocabulary. So I'm going to use a picture to help describe some of this vocabulary. A central angle is an angle that um, goes from the center of the circle. So let's say we call this uh, circle C. Okay, And we go ahead and draw a radius out to point A and another radii out to point B. Okay. Uh, what we have is the central angle, angle, uh, oops, ACB. Okay, so central angle is an angle that originates at the at the uh, center of the circle. A minor arc is an arc less than 180 degrees. That is a minor arc. Okay, so in this case, AB appears to be a minor arc, and we use two letters to define a minor arc with an arc symbol above it. Versus a major arc, a major arc um, is an arc. Uh, that looks like R, so arc greater than. One hundred and eighty degrees. Okay, and so you use you, you use three letters to define a major arc. So I'm going to put a third point here. So point or arc B D A. So if you trace the letters B to D to A, that is the name of that arc, and that arc appears to be greater than one hundred and eighty. So to find the measure of a minor and a major arc, uh, the measure of a minor arc is the measure, so it's equal to the measure of its central angle. Okay, so if I were to define this measure right here as a 40 degree, that would mean arc AB, which is equal to well, I should actually put this different. The measure of angle C, or excuse me, ACB, is equal to the measure of arc AB, which is equal to 40 degrees. Okay, so arc AB is 40 degrees because central angle ACB is 40 degrees. So these two measurements are the same. The measure of a major arc, well, if you if you're using an entire circle, kind of like we have here, um, we could find the measure of arc BDA by taking 360 degrees, the full measure of all degrees in a circle, and subtracting out the measure of our minor arc, in this case AB. And that would be 360 minus 40 which is 320 degrees. Okay, so by uh, finding the measure of the minor arcs or the other arcs in the circle, you can find the measure of your major arc using different reasoning skills there. Okay, let's go ahead and try some of that. Find the measures of each arc of circle A, where BC is the diameter. Okay, so BC is our diameter. First thing I like to do when I see um, angle measures here, I just kind of like to go through and figure out all the angle measures if I can. Okay, that usually helps to solve problems even without looking there at the uh, different arcs I'm supposed to try to find. So first thing I notice is this is a straight angle, and straight angles add up to 180 degrees. They're half of a circle, or also known as a semicircle, a half of a circle. So if this is 180 degrees for um, this semicircle, then the other half of the circle is also 180 degrees. Okay. That would mean if we combine the measure of angle DAC plus the measure of angle BAD, we should get 180. And we already know what uh, DAC is. That's 59. Okay, so 59 plus measure of angle BAD is equal to 180. Okay, and so the measure of angle BAD. A D is 180 minus 59 
also known as 121. Okay, so this is 121 degrees right in here for A. We'll get rid of that 180 there. Okay. And so now we can look at our arcs, arc DC. Well, arc DC subtends the uh, the uh, the angle DAC. Okay, it's the its central angle is DAC, so it's congruent to DAC, so it's 59 degrees. And arc CBD. So if we go to C to B to D, okay, C to B to D, connect the dots there, that is 180 plus 121 or 200, or excuse me, 301 degrees. You could have done that a different way, right? You could have said, well, it's also 360 minus 59. That's 301. Okay, and then C, D, B, so C to D to B. Oops. Go ahead and erase that. So C to D to B. Well, notice that's a semicircle, 180 degrees. All right. Let's go ahead and check out another uh, piece here, finding arc measures. Adjacent arcs are arcs that uh, intersect at one point. All right. So if I were to look down here, B, C. So for instance, arc BC and arc, well, BD. Notice they both have in common that point. BC goes from here to here. Well, that was a bad tracing job. And then BD, okay, they share a common point. All right, the arc addition postulate says the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the, well, that's the sum of the two arcs. So if I wanted to find um, the measure of arc CBD, notice arc CBD is made up of our two adjacent arcs, arc BC plus arc BD. And technically, I guess we're looking at the measure of each of those, right? The measure of arc. Um, it's a big deal when we talk about the measure because a measure re refers to a degree measure, whereas length refers to an actual piece of the circumference. It's something you can measure with like a um, in centimeters or inches. Okay, those that would be an example of the arc addition postulate. So applying that, find the measure of each arc where EB is the diameter. Well, once again, I like to just figure out all the angle measures if I can. So first thing I notice is uh, this right here is a straight angle, okay? So that means 135 plus something plus C. Well, we don't even have a center point here. If we called that P, maybe. CPB, okay? That would be 180 degrees. So what adds to 135 to make 180? Well, hopefully some mental math there. We know that that's 45 degrees. Okay, so we have 45 there. And then also notice, hopefully you're good at recognizing vertical angles, right? Because vertical angles are congruent. So this 45 can be transferred up here. It's also 45, right? And we could say the same thing about 135. This is 135, which means this is 135. So 81 plus what is 135? That would be 54. Okay, so now we have all of our angle measures we can do some, some calculating here. So arc E, C, right there. That is 81 degrees plus 54 degrees. It's the sum of our adjacent arcs, ED and DC. Yeah, so 81 and 54, grand total of 55 there. And let's go ahead and take a look at um, ECB. So now we go E to C to B. Well, notice that is a semicircle. That is 180 degrees. All right, different colors may help you if you're struggling with this, so you can trace them. So E to D to F, notice it's three letters, so that is a major arc. It's gonna be greater than 180. 
So it is everything except for that 45. So one way to do it is go 360 minus 45 degrees, and we have 315 degrees. And that 45 we took away actually happens to be the next piece here, EF. So EF, the part that's not traced, is 45 degrees. All right. Let's take a look at another theorem, congruent circles theorem. Two circles are congruent if and only if they have the, oh, excuse me there, same radius. Okay, so if I were to label this circle, maybe call it uh, circle A, and we draw radii, radii there out, and we'll call it B. And then we label this circle, and we call it circle C, and we draw a radii, and we call it, actually, let's change the way it looks here, call it D. And then I mark those congruent. I would know that circle A is congruent to circle C because AB is congruent to CD. The congruent central angles theorem, which is how we kind of apply some of this, um, in the same circle or in congruent circles. Now, remember, congruent circles have the same radii measure. Two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding central angles Are congruent. So what that says, um, actually let's do this. Let's go here and here. Let's call this our center. All right. And we'll call it point P. Go Q um, R S and T. All right. And so we know that angle Let's just go angle T, P, S is congruent to angle Q, P, R because of vertical angles. Okay, so that would tell us that since those two angles are congruent, that their corresponding arcs, Q, R, and TS are also congruent. Okay, the two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding central angles are congruent. So QR is congruent to TS because TPS is congruent to QRS or QPS or QPR, excuse me. And you can kind of go the same way over here, right? I mean, that means this is going to be congruent to that based on vertical angles being congruent. Okay, so let's apply that. Are the red arcs congruent? Why or why not? Well, remember, in order for um, arcs to be congruent, you have to have either the same circle or the same radius. Okay, well, we aren't in the same circle. However, we do have the same radius, so we have congruent circles. And then the other rule is, oops, the other rule is they have to have corresponding central angles that are congruent. Well, there it is. So yes, we have two things. We have congruent circles. That's a T there. And we have congruent central angles. All right, part B, let's go ahead and switch up our colors here. Part B, well notice we have um, congruent central angles, okay? However, we don't have congruent circles here. Um, the interior circle, is smaller than the exterior because their radii are different. So 
So, um, nope. And the reason circles are not congruent. All right, one last piece is similar. Similar circles theorem, all circles are, well, similar. All circles are. They're all proportional. Similar arcs, well, two arcs are similar if and only if they have the same measure. All right, well, notice these pictures that I have down here for A and for B are the same pictures that I had on the previous for congruent. Okay, are the red arcs similar? Well, the rule is they have to have the same measure. Only there's one less rule now. Do they have the same measure, the central arc angles? Well, yes, that means their arcs have the same measure. Therefore, yes, both measure, both arcs measure 92 degrees. So all you have to have is the same measure. Okay, don't have to worry about congruent, congruent circles or anything. So in letter B, which was not, these arcs were not congruent. However, these arcs are similar because they have the same measure. So yes, because both measure 134 degrees. So therefore, they are both similar. Well, I think that's it. Yep, good lucky.